Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, NASA announced its finalists for its Discovery Program. These are missions that can be proposed by universities and other institutions, which can be investigated and funded and flown by NASA. So, you know, NASA have their flagship missions, which are things like the Mars Science Rovers. And then below that, you have the New Frontiers, where you have things like Osiris Rex and Dragonfly. Discovery class, they have a couple of those every five years or so, and those are supposed to have a budget of about $500 million each, and it's performed through a competition, so to speak. So over the last few months, they've been reviewing many, many proposals for the next iteration, and they've narrowed it down to four potential missions visiting three different bodies. And the three planets are celestial bodies, let's say, that they're interested in visiting are Venus, Io and Triton. And I guess I will start out with uh, Io because it's in the middle. I don't know why. But yeah, they've got the Io Volcano Observer, which is a mission that would make multiple close encounters with Io while orbiting Jupiter. It wouldn't go into orbit around Io. Instead, it would go into a highly inclined orbit around Jupiter. And every now and then, it would pass by Io very, very quickly and perform a whole bunch of science. So the payload would have you know, wide angle cameras, narrow angle cameras, thermal imagers, magnetometers. It would have a, a spec, a mass spectrometers because they want to be able to get close enough that they can actually fly through the atmosphere around uh, Io. And ideally, if everything works out, they might be able to fly through the plume of a volcano because they're really interested in the volcan volcanic activity on Io. Io is the only other uh, you know, body in the solar system where we have seen active volcanoes. And okay, we've seen active cryovolcanism, but this is real honest to God boiling lava that will kill you. I mean, it'll kill you, but then again, the radiation and lack of air will probably kill you at Io faster. Uh, and actually the choice of the orbit going around Jupiter and dropping into Io is designed to reduce the radiation impact on the spacecraft. So it's a sort of a cunning trick that reduces the delta V requirements and makes sure that they're staying in the radiation environment around Jupiter a lot less than other potential missions. If you look at things like uh, Europa Clipper, that is going to get baked in the highly energetic radiation environment around Jupiter. Whereas Io Volcano, Volcano Explorer is going to get, uh, you know, be a little more chill. So this spacecraft, because it's around Jupiter, they think they can get away with powering the whole shebang with um, solar panels, just like Juno. And ideally, they would launch in around 2026 with a target of reaching Jupiter around 2031 with you know, maybe four years of operation plus optional mission extensions. And the next contender is Trident, which would fly by Triton. Uh, a largest moon of Neptune. It is the only major moon in the solar system which is orbiting retrograde compared to its parent body. And it's thought that this 2,700 kilometer moon is likely a captured Kuiper Belt object, very similar to uh, Pluto, but captured into orbit around another planet. And it was one of the first planets in this, or moons in the solar system where we saw cryovolcanism. It was last visited, of course, by Voyager, which flew past, and there's good evidence for vol uh, cryovolcanic plumes. So it turns out that because of the orientation of the solar system, there is a rare low delta V trajectory available to them where they would launch from Earth, fly by Venus and get an assist, get another Earth assist, and then a, a, say a third, well, second Earth assist, fly by Jupiter, and then it would be a beeline towards Neptune. So starting in 2026, fly by Jupiter in 2032, and get some nice pictures of Io while you're there, and then, yep, fly by Neptune in 2038, and then science the heck out of Triton as they fly past. Because this mission is so far out, they would need a radioisotope thermal electric generator. And I think this is the first time in a while that a Discovery class mission has had that as an option. Uh, the trajectory would bring it, bring it sufficiently close 
that they would be able to, they would be inside Triton's thin atmosphere. I think they would have come within about 500 kilometers. So they will include, you know, plasma spectrometers to actually get some analysis of that. Yeah, so obviously you've got your standard instruments, again, wide, narrow angle cameras, uh, infrared spectrometers, there'll be magnetometers. This would be able to map the entire surface of Triton over the time and also get a bunch of other information about this object, which is very likely a primordial body from the early days of the solar system. You know, Triton's really cool because it, I mean, it literally is really, really cool. It's so far out there. Uh, it has a surface which is essentially frozen water ice, but on top of that, the nitrogen has formed a frost and it's a highly reflective body, which means its temperature is actually lower than you would imagine. So yeah, I mean, it hasn't been visited for a long, long time and that would make it a very interesting spacecraft. Okay, now we have the two Venus proposals. The last time the US sent a mission to Venus was 1978. That was the Pioneer Venus Orbiter launched on an Atlas Centaur and it operated for over a decade. But now we have two potential Venus probe candidates. One is Da Vinci Plus, and the plus is very important. So Da Vinci is the Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigations, Noble Gases, Chemistry and Imaging Plus. So Da Vinci was actually in the previous discovery round, but it lost out to Psyche and Lucy, which both go to uh, asteroids. Um, Da Vinci is essentially an atmosphere probe that will descend through Venus, collect all the science it can in an hour. It will include imaging to, to get uh, images off the surface at various resolutions using modern cameras. And that will be it. It'll fly for like an hour, collect a ton of data. This will be relayed down to back to Earth via the orbiter. So it's not actually an orbiter right away. It does a flyby and then it does a second flyby. And then the, I think on the third flyby, that's when it drops the atmosphere probe. And then about seven months maybe after that, it finally gets to Venus's orbit. And the spacecraft includes cameras. It includes some you know, modern technology to try and get better information on the surface of Venus. So they think that while Da Vinci 1.0 failed to pass muster. Da Vinci 2.0 or Da Vinci Plus may make the difference. But look, if you're fascinated by Venus, you have another option. Veritas is the other candidate. The Venus Emissivity Radio Science INSAR Topography and Spectroscopy. This is going to be a spacecraft which goes into orbit around Venus and spends a lot of time performing uh, radar mapping using synthetic aperture radar. This will give them a digital elevation model of the entire planet with a resolution of about 250 meters per pixel and a vertical accuracy of about 5 meters. Uh, this was also a finalist for the previous round of Discovery missions, and it obviously lost out as well. Uh, incidentally, yeah, Lucy and Psyche, they're well on track and we're very excited to see what, the, what happens. So yeah, uh, Veritas sounds very much to me like Magellan++, plus plus, you know, Magellan 2.0. Okay, so some of you might be wondering what I think, uh, and I'm say I couldn't pick one favorite. It'd be like picking a favorite child. And, well, I wouldn't do that on the internet because my children might be watching. And also the people that make these great devices might actually watch this. Honestly, I, I wish that they could all be funded. I wish there was an endless amount of, you know, cash and resources available to make all these missions happen. I, I do think that the Triton one stands out because it has to be done now. Otherwise, you know, you're going to miss the opportunity for quite a while or it becomes a much more expensive option. Venus, on the other hand, Venus is there. We just get Venus windows all the time. And while it is a shame that we haven't sent a mission to Venus since 1978, that's like 40 years, seriously. Uh, you know, we should be sending more missions to Venus because it's, it's there, right? Uh, Io, I'd love to see the volcanoes up close. That would be really, really cool. Uh, I mean, it's, or hot. I mean, the Venus, definitely very hot. Um, but, uh, I, but I think one of the cool things that they mentioned was that, you know, we had Galileo out at Jupiter. This was definitely a flagship mission that spent a long time at Jupiter 
collecting and sciencing everything that it could, but it was stymied by having like the equivalent of carrier pigeons sending data back. It was able to send back something like 100 bits per second once they had retuned and perfected everything. And that was not the greatest. <laughs> you know, you can't send a huge amount of data like that. So they figured out, uh, the team behind uh, the Isle Volcano Explorer, every fly past of Io at 18 kilometers per second, they would get about 20 giga gigabytes of data. Gigabytes? Gigabytes. And <laughs> that would be a hundred times the amount of data that Galileo returned on Io over its entire Jupiter campaign. So, you know, that's something to appreciate is that even though we were Jupiter, you know, a decade ago, Technology's moved on so much, we've got so much more data. All of these things will provide a such a copious quantity of information that we will get science from them from years to come. So I, I want them all to succeed. Um, and I, I hope the proposals at least, uh, you know, will make it clearer <laughs> the, for, for NASA because it's, it's an unfortunate job to have to pick one of these things. So yes, may the best mission win. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.